Hey guys, this is my first video, so I thought I should maybe tell you a little bit about myself and also what I hope to do with this channel. My name is Alex, and I am a fourth year student at the University of Virginia. I actually enrolled in the university in the engineering school studying computer science, which I really like, but I've always had kind of a side interest in mathematics, always been intrigued by some of the peculiar peculiarities and um, read some books and stuff. And so finally I was just like, I'm going to try, took a topology course, which is kind of a drastic decision. Topology isn't, it's not the kind of like first course that you would take in mathematics. In some senses it is basic, but it's, if you've never had a proof-based math course before, it's a lot to handle and it's very abstract. So it was hard, but um, it definitely sparked my interest. In the next semester I took number theory and abstract algebra, and from then I was hooked. So I declared my math major, so I'm, I'm graduating with a degree in mathematics as well as a degree in computer science for engineering. And um, I, I'm passionate about math. It's what, I, it's what I care about. It's what I want to study for the rest of my life. Well, that's, oh, that's, I don't think I've ever said that out loud before. But um, so I hope that I'm able to kind of convey some of that passion to you. So the name of this channel is Exotic Math. And I chose a name that I wanted to really express what it, what this is about and what it's about is the fact that math is too often seen as something that is dry boring uh, and even in my undergraduate experience i can't speak for you know all the colleges across the country but for me math classes have been notoriously like i go to class people either do example problems or do proofs on the board the whole time and i i think in my entire undergraduate career majoring in mathematics i don't think i've ever heard in a math class someone mention an open problem in mathematics, meaning like a problem that, you know, we're still researching that the human race hasn't solved yet. And I think that's really a, a shame because that's the kind of stuff that's interesting, you know? And the fact that you, you don't hear about that stuff is kind of uninspiring. So the mathematics that we're typically exposed to in school is not exotic math. It's the dry and boring recitation proof. But that's where I come in, and I hope to expose you to this other side of math that is interesting and beautiful and exotic, and unlike anything you've seen before. I hope to discuss a really wide range of topics, uh, both for people who are maybe even in high school, as well as undergraduate and graduate students in mathematics. So I will cover some more advanced material. One of the big things I want to talk about are open problems in mathematics. What it means for a problem to be open is just that we haven't solved it yet, we haven't found a proof. And it really is amazing because some of these problems are, you know, we haven't, we've asked them for hundreds of years and we still don't know the answer. But remarkably, there have been problems that have been open for hundreds of years that we have solved. And that just is like really amazing to me that, you know, math is that deep that after hundreds and hundreds of years of working on a problem, we can actually prove the result and find the answer. For example, for Mas last theorem, that's the, you know, the big thing that comes to mind. Another thing I want to touch on are these pathological situations that sometimes arise in mathematics. So if you've taken a class in analysis or something, there are these properties of spaces that are very typically, they're what we're used to. It's what we experience, you know, in the real world, so to speak. But in fact, there are sets that we can construct or cases that exist that are just like, have these properties that you could never even imagine could be possible. So for example, the Cantor set, which I'm going to talk about for a whole video, is, you know, has these properties that are not intuitive. And even me, I'm, you know, I love math. I study it all the time and I'm sitting there and I'm just like, this is insane. How does this work? <laughs> Another example of exotic math is how math appears in fields outside of pure theoretical mathematics, especially in nature. As an immediate example of this, the seashell with the pattern that you see in the beginning, you know, in that little video I added, is generated by a very simple mathematical pattern. And this is actually probably, if I had to pick one thing that really got me interested in math, it was reading about this phenomenon and just seeing how such a simple mathematical rule not only could lead to such complex patterns, but also that these patterns are, you know, they exist in nature. So I guess in short, I kind of have this mathematical zeal. I'm really excited about a lot of these things in math and I wanna share them with people. And I try to share them with my friends, but that does not go over well very often because, you know, they'll try to humor me, but I can tell that they are, are often not interested. 
So I hope to you know reach to an reach an audience that has some sort of interest in mathematics, and I can hopefully advance that interest and show you guys something that you maybe haven't seen before. And hopefully you can show me something too. So thanks. And I will make another video soon with an actual topic.